Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at lexicographic ordered sets. Now specifically, we're going to be looking at the set of all strings of letters of arbitrary length. So length 1, length 2, length 3, and these are not just English words, they can be AA, AAA, dog, door. And the way you order words is according to alphabetical order, or specifically it's called the lexicographical order. Now this problem is exercise 1.1.10, which can be found in your free online real analysis textbook, and I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out. This problem says, let D be the ordered set of all possible words, not just English words, all strings of letters of arbitrary length, using the Latin alphabet, using only lowercase letters. The order is the lexicographic order, as in a dictionary, e.g. AA is less than AAA, and let's go through each of these real quick together. So AA is less than AAA because they both start with AA, but because the second object has a third letter and the first object doesn't, and they both start with AA, then that means that AAA is greater than AA. AAA is less than dog because D comes after A, and so because the first letters of these strings do not agree, then we have a discrepancy. So for example, with dog and door, they both start with D-O, but because G comes before O in the third letter, there's a discrepancy in the third letter, and so I automatically know which object is bigger. And it's a typical alphabetical order. Now, let A be the subset of D containing the words whose first letter is A. Show that A has a supremum and find what it is. So this means that A is just the set of all words or strings that start with A. So here we have two examples. A is in A and A, B, C, D is in A. So let's take a look at A and A, B, C, D. Which one is bigger according to the lexicographic order? Well, they both agree on the first letter, but because this second word has more after and this first word doesn't, and that means the second string is larger. So apparently this set A has a supremum. There is some string of letters of some arbitrary length. We don't know what that length is. And that element is the supremum of A. We need to figure out what that element is. How can I find a very large element in A? What would that look like? Well, if I wanna build a large element in the set here, I have to start with A, right? Then for my second letter, what would be a really good choice for my second letter if I want to build a big string here? So I would pick Z. And that way that guarantees that it, if I have any other word, A, B, for example, I know Z is going to be greater than or equal to whatever my second letter here is. And so I think Z is a good choice here. And then I could pick Z for the next one, and 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 Z for the next one. I need, um, I need to keep going here, right? And here we run into a problem. If I stop, then did I find the supremum? Did I find the largest element in A? Well, no. And that's because A doesn't have a largest element. But that doesn't necessarily mean that A doesn't have a supremum. A could still have a supremum, and it does. It's just that the supremum is not contained inside of A. It's contained inside of D. So what could be the supremum here? Well, let's explain why this is not the supremum. Why is that not the supremum of A? Why is this not the largest element? Well, because I can find a larger element. Voila, I found a larger element in A. And I can find an even larger element than that. And I can just keep going. Whatever you give me, I'll just tack on another Z. And no matter what, I'm going to get a larger element. Now, we're working with specific arbitrary lengths. We're not working with infinite lengths. That would be more interesting if we were. Maybe. I'm not sure. I haven't really worked out that problem yet. But we're going to have to think outside the box here. 
We're going to have to find something. What if we try picking B, which is in D? Well, then I know that B is an upper bound to A since if I have any word, if I have any string A and then the next one will say A1, A2, A3, all the way up to A, K, where K is some natural number. I know that this is less than or equal to B. I know that's true because here the first letters disagree no matter what. And so since B comes after A, that means that this string is greater than or equal to this string. So that's nice. I have an upper bound, but do I have the least upper bound? Well, not necessarily. There could be maybe something in between B here and this element, which is not the supremum. So yeah, that might be an upper bound, but B is not necessarily the least upper bound. We need to show that. How do we show that? That's a little tricky. This is going to get a little weird. So let's let beta be a string y1 y2 y3 all the way to ym and let's let beta be an upper bound of a now let's suppose that y1 is specifically the letter a so then that means that beta is a and then y2 y3 all the way up to ym well because of that that means beta is less than b the letter b specifically why is that well because beta starts with a and b comes after a well this is going to be problematic because Consider the string A, Z, Z, Z. And here I'm going to have M plus one copies of Z. And I'm going to call this element gamma. This element is in my set D here. Technically also in my set A. Well, then how can we compare beta and gamma? Well, it has to be the case then that beta is strictly less than gamma. Now, why is that? Well, that's because the greatest this element beta can be is if all of these y sub 2, y sub 3, all the way up to y sub n, if they're all z, the letter z. That would maximize the value of beta relative to the lexicographical order. But this element gamma here has m plus 1 copies of z. So even then, even then, gamma is still larger. But this is problematic because we assumed that beta was an upper bound of A. Yet we have an element in A which is greater than my upper bound to A. That's problematic. So what did we contradict here? Well, the assumption we made was that y1 is a. So then that means y1 can't be a. And if y1 is not a, then that means that b is less than or equal to beta, which is y1, y2, y3, all the way up to ym. I know that y1 is not a. I know that because beta is an upper bound and we show that upper bounds can't have the first letter be a. And so that means y1 is not a. So it's either b or c or d or e or f. Regardless though, b is less, the, the letter b, the string b is less than or equal to whatever this string is. And so this means that my string B here is the least upper bound of my set A. 
And so I just found an upper bound to A, which was also the least upper bound to A, which means that the supremum of A exists and I found it. It's right here, B. That's kind of interesting. I like this problem. This is a fun problem. Thanks everyone. And I'll see you all in the next video.